power of perspective is that it is what we believe. It's a relationship of everything we've seen, thought, touched, smelled, and it shapes what we do. It's, it moves our behavior. It's like, it's like inspiration. It's the why. Um, so why bother? Like, why, why do you care? So why is a life force? And why is encoded, in my opinion, in a fusion between the head, the hand, and the heart? I'm offering this uh, mandala to help describe um, that fusion. And I have three different endeavors where we're going to stop, where I've learned that creativity and literacy are terminals, uh, terminals of equal magnitude in finding, helping a student find their perspective and answer the questions, why? So I'm going to ask you to enter the mandala through the head. So the head, or the cauldron, or the switching station of all of our senses and intellect, is where these three endeavors, the importance of where those come into the picture. The first one I'm going to be talking about is the art science fusion. I'm co-founder with Dr. Diane Ullman, a new paradigm for teaching and learning, which has an experiential base hands-on. The significance of the art science fusion is that it starts with a very traditional looking lecture to a classroom very standard looking group of students. But what you don't see is, is that this is the intellectual borderland. What we've done is we've had equal number of scientists and artists. So we have botanists, physicists, chemists, engineers sitting right across the aisle from musicians and painters and sculptors and writers. So we very quickly push off of traditional forms of approaching intellectual matter. And we, we get them out into nature. So one thing that's really important to the model of art science fusion is that environmental literary, literacy piece. We feel that taking them out, and in this case, it's the Arboretum. Uh, we have a strategic alliance with the beautiful gardens that want, run from one end of the campus to the other. And we feel that this is where, in this drought tolerant Ruth store a garden, students can let the birds and bees and flowers and trees do, do the talking. We're also very interested in bringing specialists, bringing people who can say something about those birds and bees. And in this case, it's out at the Oak Discovery Trail, uh, the world's largest, most beautiful collection of oaks that was planted by a, a person here on campus 60 years ago. So, what we're seeing here is the master, master gardener at the Arboretum, along with an entomologist, an artist. We're talking about that blank wall, because each quarter, for two and a half months, students unfold in a creative activity using their hands to create a legacy piece, a major large-scale public art piece. Here's another environment, uh, the bees. We have issues with the bees. So, so out at the honeybee facility, they're able to smell and touch and feel uh, the issue of the bees. They're able to go into the hive, into the intimate behaviors of the bees. And very shortly, we see in our textiles department, the bees are being uh, talked about, felt, and expressions of creative pieces come out. So these are our bee communicators. This is biomimicry. This is uh, intellectual and environmental literacy at its, at its best. So here is another piece from our photography. Um, bridging art and science. So all of these different mediums pass through the student's brain into their hands. So you can see here, Serena has become the environment. She's, she's fused her body into the, the wall that you see here made the year before. A beautiful example of art science fusion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have us disappear into the landscape, move south to Baja, Mexico, where I have, uh, in 2005, I uh, created a Todos Artes. It's a creative space where people can come in a destination workshop and create their little brains and their little hands off uh, in an unobstructed 
environment of ocean and, and support from three dream team artists. Here you see 2012, a team that came from all kinds of places and spaces and international collection. And I call this a cross-generation, cross-cultural fusion. So uh, cross-generation in that there's my son on the far left. There's two husband and wife teams here. And there's a son and, and mother. So what I'm interested in doing is busting out of where people are typically supposed to be. And of course, the Mexican engagement is the most important part for me. I think we have a lot of gifts to share across our border, uh, rather than just uh, wars and drug uh, trafficking. This is a, a healing response. So for one week, on that wall in the, in the middle of town, a magnificent large-scale public art piece was created. Here's a celebration between the government of Mexico and Todos Artes. You can see the governor and his wife. Uh, you can see the delegado. And then on the left-hand side are all us gringos that came from many ports of call. So this is, a, this is a legacy piece. This is an immortal stab at something that's very significant to the Mexican people, that they be interacted, engaged. It was 180 Mexicans and Americans and people from different places that worked on this. So I'm going to move back up north to uh, Billick Rock Art. And this is sort of the stealth bomber of all of my endeavors, in that in 43 years, I've been able to download uh, huge, large-scale public art pieces. Uh, 1982, Jerry Brown exploded in my mind, the concept that we can express who we are in artifacts into the space with the percent for the art. So a tremendous amount of money and resources and support came hemorrhaging into the Californias, into the United States, and, and that's the wave I rode. So I'm uh, just a few miles out of town, and we use rock art mediums because those are the mediums that every continent uses them, mosaic, ceramic, stone, bronze to create artwork that goes nowhere. It stays in its place. So I'm like a contemporary cave painter. So always since the beginning of time, people have been able to, to say who they are and express. And there's a drive to do that. And I'm just essentially uh, in, on the same page. One of the outreaches that the Billick Rock Art has done, because I really believe these folk arts need to be handed off. I really believe that the classroom is where this can happen. So I have um, many, probably over 150 um, murals that are done with elementary school kids, high school kids, and junior high. This is basic foundation of this, is that collaboration, communication, and creativity is where you build a meaningful perspective and a, a long-lasting uh, effect in the relationships that are created. So I'm going to ask you to enter the mandala again. And this time, we're going to come out through the hands. The hands, uh, my motto is leave no hand unused. Uh, and I want to talk a little bit, again, about the art science fusion. So the Labudio lab hyphen studio is a word that we concocted to describe this cross facility that's on the UC Davis campus. And in that facility, all of the head stuff goes into the hand. So we have artists that become tree-hugging environmentalists, and then we have scientists that become clayaholics. So uh, hands get dirty. It's the nature of the beast. But what we're offering students is, is that they actually have a legacy here at UC Davis. They're only here for a few years, and there's not much evidence. So the pieces that we're making in the Labudio are installed throughout the campus, both painted murals. We actually have performances from music department. So there's, there's, there's a vibrant expression that comes out of UC Davis. And it's the student's work. This is another part of the art science fusion. I really believe in handing it off. Uh, and these kids are all about the bees. They had the, the hive taken to them. And then they created a, a, a legacy piece, a monument, that uh, that piece will be there when they're old and they can bring their kids by it. So another part of uh, the community build aspect that the Art Science Fusion is interested in is uh, in the Labudio, we open it up once a week for, for you and um, 
colleagues and people that come become uh, in droves to be able to have a hands-on expression in the clay. Here's a student that is putting a plant from the drought tolerant plant garden that I showed you into a final piece. This is an engineering student. She was really clear she couldn't possibly do it. Uh, and then this is a collaboration between the US government Smithsonian site at the US Botanic Garden, the First Ladies. And th they invited us to bring what we've got from the art science fusion into this space. So you can see collectively in two and a half months, the students got right on down into the clay and created this beautiful monument. It was there for eight months and then it passed from there to the um, state fair. And then um, it's actually in my fingernails because in the last two weeks I've been installing it out in the Arboretum. So, so you can go out and see it there or you can come up and see the grout in my fingernails. So that's fresh art, right? Uh, here's another example of a stellar uh, piece that was created in the, again, open 24-7, making art available to the widest segment of the population, your arboretum. So here's a 800-year tree, the story of an 800-year-old tree, picture by picture, panel by panel that the students carved. And this is tanning. It was done in the medieval ages. So, so oak trees is the topic. And here they've, they've done, done a beautiful job describing what oaks we use for. So this is the living classroom. So this living classroom is something that many, many aging stations can come here and, and express themselves. I'm crossing back down into the border because this experiment has three different endeavors. This is where young people are wrestling together an art piece celebrating whales, the Bayena. So this is in front of the compound, Todos Artes, and uh, they're uh, absolutely engaged with the space because the Mexicans feel very proud that that migration is happening in their waters. So what I'm presenting here is something that I wanted to get all over you because community build is something that can happen everywhere. This is one week, 15 people put this wall, boom, into place. Also this rug, everybody did a stitch. So in that same one week period of time, um, this welcome mat was laid down. But what's really more impactful for me, what's more important than the gifting of these pieces to Toto Santos in Baja is the relationships between the Mexican people, which it's their home, and all of the people who come down there to share it and enjoy it. So I'm gonna take us right back up north again to Billick Rock Art. So Billick Rock Art, is a function of immortal mediums, terrazzo in this case. This is in front of a metropolitan building uh, in Chico. And uh, people have to pass through it every day. So in this case, art rules. It's, a, it's, it's an engagement piece that uh, can't be missed. This again, Billick Rock Art, making it possible for children to have a difference and have that creative uh, confidence. I'm very interested in building that language with the hands and the heart and the head, the fusion. This is a piece in um, Huntington Beach, Surf City, and it's all about the ocean. So you can see hundreds of people, rock by rock, pebble by pebble, harvested the ocean where this place is and, and put it into some expression that is, is meaningful to their environment. So environmental literacy, all of the things that um, are able to happen within that mandala with the head, the hand, and the heart fusions, these cross disciplines, these cross generations, these cross borders, uh, is being brought back into the mandala, into the space of the heart. So I believe transformation happens in the space of the heart. So you can see, again, another photograph that's a very powerful image where the student has thrown open their chest and looked at what's going on inside. And the legacy pieces, the passing on of this medium to future generations, these things will last through time. These are the rocks of ages. These are the artifacts that describe who we are and, and what we came here for. My, uh, invitation to you is to uh, hook up, protect little things, and work together in collaboration to bring our heads, hearts, and hands together. Thank you. Thank you.